Welcome to Spell and Math Tutorials. My name is AJ. Today we continue the Valentine's Day series. In just a moment, we're going to explore the heart equation using the online graphing tool Desmos. And by the end of this clip, you'll be able to create dynamic heart equations as seen in our finished project right here. If you like this project, please let me know in the comments below. All right, let's get started. Here we have the heart equation that we'll be using in Desmos. Uh, but I want to make one small alteration to this equation. First thing I want to do is we want to change this from radical form to its exponential form. Well, to do that, we write the base, which is x. We take the power, make that our numerator. We take the index and make that our denominator. So x to the 2 thirds is the same thing as the cube root of x squared. So what we're going to do is take this original equation and we're going to make it um, dynamic uh, using the, the tool Desmos. So let's take a look at what the project, what the finished project looks like. So here we have a couple of hearts in the middle that are beating. And then we can change the speed at which the hearts are beating. We see that there are two purple hearts orbiting the two beating hearts in the middle. And we can change the speed at which the um, hearts are orbiting. And we can change the distance from the purple hearts to the two hearts here, red hearts here in the middle. All right, with that, let's go ahead and begin working on the project. So let's go to a clean slate here and let's click on open graph and let's put in the heart equation. Well, that's going to be X raised to the second power. We're going to add Y minus uh, X raised to the two thirds power, which we said is the same thing as the cube root of X squared. We're going to take that quantity and square it and we're going to set that equal to one. So that there creates our first heart. We're going to need four hearts, so let's click the gear and let's duplicate this first equation three more times. So now we really have three hearts sitting here. We can only see, um, it only appears to be one. But first things first, we want the hearts to be shaded. So let's make this here um, a less than or equal to, so we're going to make it an uh, inequality. And this constant here of one changes the size. So let's come to the second one. Let's again make it less than or equal to. And what I want to do is make this one twice as big. So let's make that, whoops, let's just make that a two. So here we have, so here we're, we're seeing uh, the two hearts. And then down here, we know that we want to have a purple one. So let's hold, click on that to hold it. Let's switch that to purple. And then let's also do the same thing here. Where we switch this one to purple. We can't see those just yet, but we can see the, we can see the outlines. So Let's do the part where we have the actual beating hearts in the middle. Well, to do that, we need to create a slider. We're going to call that slider A, and we're going to multiply the value of A times the size of the particular heart. So in this case, we have this slider A, and I'm going to give it a starting value of 1 and an ending value of 2, and I want it to increment or step in, uh, and step by once. So what I'm going to do now is press Enter here, and I'm going to have my little slider and I can actually play the slider so it can so it can run on its own. So let's increase the speed and then that's going to give us the the beating heart. All right. So now what I want to do is now let's work on some left and right movement or some horizontal shifting. What well, to do horizontal shifting, we have to manipulate the x value in our equation. So let's place some uh, parentheses around the x values here and we're going to put in the amount that we want these x values to be altered by. Well, we're going to use trig because eventually we want to have a half circular motion or circular motion, but we know that if we only use, in this case, cosine, cosine by itself is only going to give us the left and right or horizontal movement. Well, the expression that we use is going to be minus r, where r is the radius, cosine, and then I'm going to use the letter, let's use the letter b, where b is going to be in degrees. And here, notice that Desmos wants us to, to add the two sliders. So we'll add sliders, um, sliders uh, R, and, R and B. All right. Uh, also, I'm going to add a link up here to the right so that you can kind of, so that you can understand where that R cosine uh, theta is coming from. Oh, and I forgot to add that here to the other side as well, because I see we got this little, this little hump here. So let's, let's get rid of that by adding in the minus R cosine and let's again use the variable b press enter here all right so now we see the other heart let's get her this extra part all right r is the radius so right now we see that it's actually moved over to the right and i'm also noticing that it's not shaded in so let's make this an inequality let's make this less than or equal to 
less than or equal to one. All right, so let's go ahead and let's make the radius here. Let's make the radius go from zero and I'm going to say out to 10 and I want that also to move in increments of one. So, so what I'm going to do now, let's go ahead and increase the radius to let's say three or you know, let's do five. So five, we see it off there. We see it there off to the side and uh, B is going to be the degrees that are going to go into the cosine function. Well, I wanted to go, I wanted to start at zero. I wanted to end at 180 to give me a half circle. And again, I want that to move in increments of one. And I also need to make sure that the graph is set to, to accept degrees. So we're going to do that. And now when I click B to play it, that purple heart should move left and right. All right. And we see that and we see that it is. Okay. Now let's, let's work on this second equation here where I wanted with this heart, I want this other purple heart to move up and down. And let me just zoom. Let me zoom out a bit so we can see better. All right. So here I need to manipulate the Y value. Well, to do that, I'm going to subtract off and this time R sine theta. And in this case, we're going to use the letter C for our next slider. And again, I'm going to put a link here so that you can look at some other tutorials that I have dealing with, with trigonometry to, to better understand where that R sine theta expression comes from. All right. So since C is going to also be degrees, I wanted to do the rest of the circle. The first one here is going from zero to 180. I want this one here to go from 180 degrees all the way to 360 degrees. And I want that also, I want that to increment also in steps of one. So now when I play C, the other uh, heart is going up and down and notice it's only going from like zero to negative uh, five. And the reason it's doing that is because from, um, from uh, what is that? 180 degrees to 360 degrees sign is only going from zero to negative one. So that's why we only see it going basically back up to the origin. And also I see here, let's, let's make the inequality less than or equal to. So now that one, that heart is also, is also shaded. Now that we have that, I'm going to add both the sine and cosine translations to each one of these um, heart equations. And that's going to give us the half circle movement. And matter of fact, let's move this. Let's move this one up. So now they're right underneath each other. So here I'm going to put this X here in parentheses. And I'm going to add in the translation. Here is R cosine. And the slider that I'm using here is going to be C and I'm going to do the same thing for this X value, put in my minus sign R cosine and again C. And now when I, now when I execute C, we should see a half circle movement and we do see that half circle movement. Let's kind of, let's zoom in. So it gets a little bit, looks a little bit better, a little bit nicer. All right. And then I'm going to do the same thing for this equation here um, in position five. I, I have the the X movements or the horizontal movements. Let's do the same thing for the vertical movement. So here I'm going to put in minus R sine. And for this one, I'm using the slider B. And let's see. And let's run B. So now as I run both of those, we see that we have the hearts uh, orbiting the the beating heart matter of fact let's make the the heart in the middle beat all right we can change the orbit so let's kind of see what the orbit looks like right now it's sitting there let's pull this back some so right now it's sitting at five now let's just move it to ten if i move it to ten we see that it's 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 taking a wider track around so i can zoom i can zoom in some so we can see that wider track all right. And now let's go ahead and just turn that off. Let's move it. Let's move it a little bit closer. Let's move it back to five. And let's see, let's make them move at different speeds. So let's kind of slow this one down to 0.5. Let's move this one here down to point, point 0.2. Let's hide this. Let's go to the settings here. Let's remove the grid and the axes. And then there you have it. Here we have the heart equation that we've made into several dynamic equations where we're seeing the hearts beat and we're seeing the other hearts uh, orbit that heart. 
all right this here is our val the one of the videos of our valentine's day series hope you enjoyed it uh thank you for watching and as always have a great day